Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, all praises and the blind is due to Yahweh by Hashem HaMashiach wa Malak Yahushai. Secondly, this is Brother Yardan. Let me fight Detroit coming back at you with yet another cold cut. Today in this cold cut, all right, we're going to go off the spirit. We're going to go straight off the spirit and um, pretty much touch on staying in the spirit. All right, this is nothing's written down. There's no breakdown. We're just going to go straight off the spirit. And whatever verses may come to light, Abaratazah, Israel may take heed to it and it can resonate with your spirit. Because I was thinking about it earlier today. You don't want to lose the oil. All right. You never want to lose the oil. That oil represents the understanding according to the scriptures. Not everything is uh, quite literal in the Bible. So when you see words such as oil, bread, milk, meat, it's not always on a carnal level. It's not always physical. It represents something. So let's get Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And we'll jump down to, matter of fact, let's get chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 8. Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Right, that ointment is simply just oil. You don't want to let your head lack any oil. Because even on a physical level, I'll pull it up. Psalms 23. In verse 5, even on a physical level, oil is a covering for your head. It protects it, right, from the sun, from certain gnats. And even on another level, in regards to cattle, to be more specific, sheep. The shepherds, they pour oil in their sheep's head to protect it from the gnats because a sheep, it can't really, you know, shoo away those flies and gnats and pesky, you know, flying creatures. So the next, next best thing is actually pouring oil in their head. This is what it uh, says in Psalms 23. I'm going to verse 1 and jump down to uh, 5. A Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. In other words, you will not lack. There's nothing you will lack because the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is your shepherd. And he's going to provide you for, with meat, milk, and bread, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. And so jumping down to verse 5, Thou preparedest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. So if Yahweh Shai is being, is being that shepherd, who is the sheep? It'll be us. We will represent the sheep. All throughout the scriptures, Israel is personified or uh, likened to a sheep. And so Yahweh Shai being that shepherd, pouring the oil upon our head, that's him anointing us and making sure we're not being bugged out. And just, in other words, also being bothered by the little things. Because although gnats, flies are little, that can really get you out the spirit. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull it up as well. Shepherd's oil. So it says, sheep are particularly susceptible to flies landing on their nose. These flies travel up the sheep noses and lay eggs, which turn into worms that can burrow into the animal's brain. Then the sheep will bang their heads, trying to get rid of the irritation. They can die from this. So each day, the shepherd pours oil on the sheep's noses and the flies slide out instead of flying in. Well, I'll, I'll provide the link in the, um, in the description box below. But nevertheless, the, um, the website is titled EquipHerLife.com. And you might want to type in the shepherd's oil. And it's real informative. Because although this is explaining oil on a sheep's head on a physical level, on a spiritual level, we understand what the oil can do for us. That oil keeps us in the spirit. That oil keeps us moving. That oil keeps our the engine, aka in this analogy, the engine being our mind and um and heart moving. It keeps it pumping. Right? I'm gonna continue on to the second paragraph. 
I don't know about you, but I certainly have a lot of daily irritations, buzzings around my head, rude actions, bothersome comments, pesky mishaps. Some of those get in my head and causes negative thoughts, angry, fearful, sinful thoughts. And if I allow them to burrow deep in my mind, they become part of my life and can destroy me. As I mentioned before, although those gnats, flies, although they're very tiny, something tiny can very well bring you out of the uh, it's like you bring you out of the spirit. Even as a bee is little amongst the other creatures, although it's little, it still provides one of the freshest things on earth, which is honey. I believe that's um, Sarak 8 and 3. Let's get that real quick. So it's uh, Sarak 11 and 3. The bee is little among such as a fly, but her fruit is the chief of the sweet things. But I just bring that up to say the tiniest things, right? In regards to the, the fly and gnats, they can really bring your whole life down and just take you out to spirit just like that. Whether it be a flat tire, whether it be your woman kind of just railing on you. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You know, your boss getting on you. Whatever the case is, you can't let those little things get to you. But how do you not let those little things get to you? You have to make sure you keep that oil, which is the scriptures, right? That oil keeps you, you know, well, well freshed. And it reads, as in butting heads, sheep will butt heads with one another to gain position and assert authority. I think that may be all I want. That's all I really want for now. But nevertheless, Lord willing, you know, that made sense to Israel. So I'll read this as well. This is the book of Sirach. Twenty-one, chapter twenty-one, and we'll read verse before we get that. Actually, I want to pull out this other precept. Let's get the book of. That's good. Bear with me. Here it is. Psalms 104 and 15. Psalms 104 and 15. And wine that maketh the glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. Right? Now, this is also really on a spiritual level, right? Wine, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, certain physical things such as wine, bread, milk, really represent wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And so wine that make the make it glad the heart of man, that's true on a physical level too. And oil to make his face to shine. Because spiritually, you want your face to shine. You want to be a light unto the people, a light unto your brothers. That's in the book of Ecclesiastes, which we'll get next. This is Psalms 141 and 5. This is the other one. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be in kindness and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. So that oil again, what is it? It's being reproved. It can be being reproved. Um, getting an understanding. Which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. That oil is not going to break your head. But without that oil, you're going to end up breaking your head because you're going to get bugged out. Literally. They call it getting bugged out for a reason because those bugs get inside of you and just take over your mind. Or, you know, just irritate your mind to where the bug is controlling you. Right? So again, hence the expression, bugged out. So let's get let's get a few more and we wind down. This is Psalms one forty 
This is Sirach chapter 11, verse 15. Wisdom, also oh, 14, prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. And, you know, we're not, you know, point of the message is to really understand that you can't lose the midnight oil. You can't lose this oil. Right. And that's not to say, you know, you're going to feel like David all day, you know, or it's like, let me see, let me give another example, like a mighty man all day. Right. You're still going to go through the motions. You're still in the flesh. You're still going to get angry. You're still going to get upset. But remembering that the Lord has your back and remember that the Lord gave you oil should be comfort unto you at the end of the day and should pacify your anger, to be honest. Um, I'll read verse 15, because, again, you can be righteous. You can do all the right things and still have tribulations and adversity. But remember, um, what's this saying? Uh, patience is a byproduct of, ad of adversity or patience is a byproduct of tribulation. So pre eventually you may be finding yourself asking the Lord for more patience. Well, he's going to bless you, right? But he's going to make you work for it or right? you have to work for your blessings. Last time I checked, uh, Jacob, he fought all day to get that blessing. He fought all day, all damn night, fighting that angel just to get his blessing. When was the last time you fought? You just fought to keep reading a little bit more so you can finally get that answer that you've been praying for. When was the last time you just, I got to fight this lust so I can finally, you know, understand what it means to, you know, rebuke spirits. I, you know, it says what it says in Luke, the 10th chapter. I mean, I can rebuke these spirits. I know I can, but I just got to endure, right? Those are the things that should be going through your mind. Verse 16, error and darkness have their beginning together with sinners and evil shall wax old with them that glory therein. You don't want to let the evil consume you and slowly wither you away as our forefathers of old, right? The certain ones. So I'll close out with this. Revelation chapter three, verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Right, and you're really that gold. You Israelites scattered to and fro, you men, women, and children, you are that gold tried through the fire. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment always remember to have your raiment white that thou mayest be clothed uh, clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear right similar with adam his nakedness and shame appeared and it was a reproach unto him and anoint thine eye with eye salve that thou may see right you want to anoint your eyes with eye salve so you can understand and perceive where you may be falling short so you can build yourself up and understand and be self-aware that the Lord may put you in a difficult situation just, just to see how you're going to respond. You ask the Lord for patience. He puts you in a situation where you can obtain patience, but it's up to you on how you're going to handle it. You can be upset. You can be like, that's stupid. That was Satan. Hold up, brother. Hold up, brother. The Lord is giving you patience. What you mean I was Satan? The Lord is trying to give you patience. I mean... You know, the most I can use Satan, you know, for that reason. But nevertheless, it falls on you. Right. That's the point. That everything is going to fall on you. How are you going to handle yourself in a terrible situation or in a sticky situation? Are you going to throw it up and praise the Lord? Remember the oil? Remember the precepts? Or are you going to just let your body and your flesh consume and devour your spirit? Those are the things that you should ask yourself the next time you fall in a sticky situation. Remember to have that midnight oil. But with that, I'm going to bid us or shalom.